Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. I trust that you are well this evening and um, are able to join us as we say goodbye to this Thursday, the 2nd of December 2021, and um, bring all our concerns and our cares to God tonight all that's on our hearts all that's in our mind we bring them to God because he told us to come to him with all our anxieties and all our fears all our cares and and Jesus said to to bring them to him bring all our heavy load all our burdens and he will give us rest so let's enter into that rest tonight uh, at least a, 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 a taste a foretaste of that eternal rest that we shall have with him may we enter into that taste of that rest tonight as we sleep so let us let us pray oh god make speed to save us oh lord make haste to help us Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness, and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon, says the Lord, and bring in my reward with me to give to everyone according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who do God's commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the city through the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for all the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star. Come, see the Spirit. Come, say the Spirit and the bride. Come, let each hearer reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come. Lord Jesus. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. There is forgiveness with you, so that you shall so that you shall be feared. In your word is my hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. Lord Jesus, you are the one who is to come, the one whom we await and long in heart, with the longing hearts. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has, show, he has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the one who is to come, the one whom we await with longing hearts and the collect. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm this evening is Psalm number 40, Psalm 4-0. The refrain, great are the wonders you have done, O Lord, my God. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of the roaring pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footing sure. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not turn to the proud but follow a lie. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. O great your designs for us. There is none that can be compared with you. If I were to proclaim them and tell of them, they would be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin you have not required. Then said I, lo, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me that I should do your will, O my God. I delight to do it. Your will, your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips. And that, O oh Lord, you know. Your righteousness I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your compassion from me, O Lord. Let your love and your faithfulness always preserve me. 
for innumerable troubles have come about me. My sins have overtaken me so that I cannot look up. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them be driven back and put to shame who wish me evil. Let those who heap insults upon me be desolate because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation say always, the Lord is great. Though I am poor and needy, the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and my deliverer, O oh my God, make no delay. Great are the wonders you have done, O oh Lord, my God. Free, from, free us from our sins, O oh God, and may our sacrifices be of praise to the glory of your Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's uh, let's leave that and move um, to our New Testament reading, which is Revelation chapter twenty-one, from verse nine to twenty-one. Revelation twenty-one, nine to twenty-one. <clears throat> all right revelation 21 one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me come i will show you the bride the wife of the lamb and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain high and great and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like uh, that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel, of the, the angel who talked, me, talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. It measured, he measured the city with the rod and found <clears throat> it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it was long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick. The, the wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper the second, sapphire, the third, agate, the fourth, emerald, the fifth, onyx, the sixth, ruby, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, turquoise, the eleventh, jacinth, and the twelfth, amethyst. 
The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. All right. You know, this is... Um, they, they, this is where a lot of people, um, I think, miss the symbolism of what's going on here. Um, may, may I just say, that John is not describing a city, a literal city. Uh, I mean, there's a whole lot of reasons why the, all of these things symbolize um, God's people. Um, John sees the people of God symbolized as a city with high walls, a perfect cube. It's the same distance around as it is high. I mean, it's a perfect cube of 12,000 stadia, 140 cubits thick wall and so forth and precious precious stones that make up this city with the the most precious of stones and golden streets transparent glass and so on sisters and brothers this is not an actual city okay i mean um I, it just we need to remember that the book of Revelation is a book of symbols. And these things are symbolic. In fact, they are very, it's very rich and powerful and, 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 cannot, and I cannot possibly go into explaining and teaching what this means. But let's, let's get this straight. This is not an actual city. This vision of a city that that um that uh john is shown by the angel is a vision of the final beauty of the people of god what god's people look like at the very end of history in heaven or on the new earth that is going to be because the city is coming down uh, out of heaven Onto earth, and and it's a it's a it's another way of showing that the the people of God are descending from heaven, and they will reside on the earth. The city makes up the whole earth. It's uh, the whole earth will be a city, <laughs> but the city is the people of God. And the first, I mean, the first question, sisters and brothers, we must ask us is. Why would God describe his people at the very end of history as a city? This is a, this is a very important question. The people of God are symbolized as a city. And not just any old city. A perfect city. The most beautiful of city that you could ever possibly imagine. A city with, with, with beautiful um, stones made up make it and, and with high walls why would you need high walls in a city all of these things sisters and brothers are the questions that we ask not looking for a physical literal city but the people of God you and I not as we are now because right now as as we are we are rough edges we are not the precious metal the precious stones that that are described here we are nothing like that at the moment but one day we will be we will be we will we will shine with the beauty of god uh but yeah uh just to say i mean I, if if there's any doubt about who these people are what this city is if it tells us very at the very beginning, John, uh, in verse 9, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Now, sisters and brothers, who is the bride? 
who is the wife of the Lamb. We, the church, the people of God, we are the bride of Christ. We are the wife of the Lamb. And so the, so the angel says to John, come, I'm going to show you the bride. I'm going to show you the wife of the Lamb. And then verse 20, and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. There we have, that's the bride. That's the wife of the lamb. The angel says, come, let me show you the bride. And John sees a city coming down out of heaven. The city is the bride. The bride is the city. The wife of the lamb is that city, the new Jerusalem. So sisters and brothers, understand that the, we are not looking to some literal city called Jerusalem. This is all symbolic language. And the language is a reference to the final, um, the final picture of what God's people looks like on the new heaven and the new earth. On the new earth, particularly, where we will live with God forever. That's the picture of us. So read it again and, and, and get an understanding and ask the question, why is the church, why is God's people described in this way, with high walls? Why do you need high walls in a city for protection? Um, that, so so the, the, the people are safe. So the people in this city or this city is safe is, 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 and so forth and, 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 and so on. So I, I will stop there. It's a wonderful picture of what we will look like at the very end of, of time when God returns with his bride, the church. Let's pray. So Father, we are thankful for the vision of your people in the final end. Lord, uh, when we look at your church today, we look nothing like the precious stones that John sees. But yet the day is coming when we will be radiant, when we will shine like the sun, like the precious stones that we are in this temple, in this city that you are making, that you are building. We remember, Lord, that uh, Paul uses this very same metaphor, that we are a temple, that you are building brick by brick. And we are that temple, your church. And so here we are told we are a city in which people from every tribe and language and nation, there's a multiculturedness about this city, about these people. There's a, special, there's a beauty, there's a, there's a safety, there is everything that a city represents, but with holiness and purity and no evil and no crime and no uh, nothing that causes fear and destruction. So Lord, we look forward to the day when your people will shine, will be this eternal city on this new earth that you are creating. Lord Jesus, come, come quickly, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this evening we pray and we continue to remember those on our prayer list. Remember those who live on Wellington Road. So remember our sister Grace, uh, who lives on Wellington Road, and others who live on Wellington Road tonight. We pray for them. We ask for God's mercy and that God will penetrate through the closed doors and closed hearts of the people who live on Wellington Road. We also pray tonight for the, our prayer, our electoral role. We pray for 
um, Pauline and Sam and the twins, Elizabeth and Alicia, and their family. And so we pray for, for their family here in the UK and, of course, abroad as well. And so, Lord, I pray for uh, Sam and Pauline, the twins, and their family tonight. We ask, Lord, that you'll hear the prayer of their own hearts for themselves and for their family. We ask for your mercy and grace upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so quickly, let's mention before God all those that are on our hearts tonight. And as we continue to remember before God those we are praying for. I do pray for um, uh, Jean and Walter, Monica, Auntie Janie. I want to pray for Joanna, our dear sister. I pray that she'll be able to make it to church on Sunday. I pray that all will be well so that she can make it to church on Sunday. She desperately wants to be among us this week. So I pray that that happens by God's grace. Uh, we pray for Ella's daughter, Wendy, um, Vesna's husband, Mokrund. We mention these names to God and ask him to have mercy. We pray for Keith and Ken. Uh, we pray for um, Dean. Continue to remember Dean in our prayers for God's grace and mercy upon her. Pray for Jane, Jane Lindsay, and Joyce, and uh, frankly, the whole family. We ask, and we remember Sue and Daisy, and we also ask God's mercy and remembrance for Andrew as well. Pray for Doreen and family here and abroad. We pray for Pauline and Roy and her family, their family as well. We pray for God's mercy on them. Pray for my friend Ryan in America and for his parents as they grapple with his illness. Pray for them uh, at this time. Lord, for all these, we pray for Dolly and Desmond as well. And uh, we ask for God's mercy on Dolly, especially as she battles her illness at this difficult time. We pray that the Lord will continue to bring relief, bring healing, bring comfort to her and others tonight. Pray for Sister Thelma and, of course, Veronica and Chester and her family as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And um, so let's um, let's have our evening prayer and then we night prayer and then we say good night for tonight. Our Father, the day is over and we turn to you before we take our rest. We have you have been with us all the day long and. For all your mercies, perceived and unperceived, we give you thanks. Of all that has been wrong and sinful in our lives today, in thought and word and deed, we repent and we ask for your gracious forgiveness. As we also forgive all those who have offended us, grant us now the blessings of a quiet mind and a trustful spirit, the freedom from fear of a child in his father's house. So we pray, help us to rest in you, at peace with you and with all people, tonight and forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us sinners, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, 
have mercy on this sinful world. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace, give you comfort, give you rest, sisters and brothers, as you sleep tonight. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a restful, peaceful night, sisters and brothers.